the theme we are running with in this seminar of January 2024, God's Word to the Churches, and we pick it from Revelation chapter 2, verse number 7. He who is able to hear, let him listen and give heed to what the Spirit says to the churches. And I remember telling us yesterday that how we come in is because of this verse. The messages were for those seven churches, but then this verse brings us in. We are among those ones who are able to hear. I believe that you are able to hear, aren't you? Me, I am able to hear. So when the Bible says, he who is able to hear, that means now all of us get included in that book. All of us get included in that message to the seven churches. And then he says, he who is able to hear, let him listen and give heed. So he doesn't just want us to listen, but he wants us to give heed what the Spirit says to the churches. And then part B of that verse says, to him who overcomes or is victorious, I will grant to eat of the fruit of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. I like it that God is a motivator. I like it. He never asked me to do something without an attached reward we see it all over the bible even when he was getting these guys out of egypt he told them i'm taking you to a land that flows with milk and honey when jesus was about to go he says do not let your hearts be troubled trust in me for in my father's house there are many mansions and i go to prepare a place for you he is a motivator now god is telling us that he who overcomes i will grant to eat the tree uh, the fruit of the tree of life so whenever we are in a fight this fight of faith you remember the devotion we had uh, is it last week or the other week that faith is a fight you know it, it will fight for this thing jesus has provided uh, these things, but we, we fight to manifest them. We, we fight temptation. We, we fight uh, to stay safe, to stay sober. We fight the devil. As we are engaged in that battle, all those battles for that matter, we should always remember that at the end of the battle, at the end of the fight, when we are victorious, we shall eat the fruit of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. There will be that day. Actually, there will be an eternal lifetime of eating the fruit of the tree of life. He who overcomes. I pray that I will be among those who overcome. I pray that you will be among those who overcome in the mighty name of Jesus. He who overcomes, I will grant to eat of the tree of life. Why do we do what we do? Why are we on these altars every day? Why are we serving the OSI? Why are we, you know, fighting temptation? Why are we fighting the fight of faith? Paul said, I have fought the good fight let's read that scripture second timothy i think it's important it's related to this one second timothy i think chapter four if i remember well uh second timothy chapter four uh verse uh, verse seven uh-huh i'm encouraging somebody to not give up yeah I'm encouraging somebody to fight. Fight for your marriage. Fight. Fight to stay married. I tell you the truth. Fight to remain faithful as a husband. Fight to remain faithful as a wife. Fight 
to remain faithful as a minister. Fight. Fight. It's a fight. It's a fight. I tell you, we wait, they give us a certificate, and then they send us to fight, to keep this marriage standing. I have fought the good fight. The Bible says, I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Oh, how I pray that this shall be like the testimony and the declaration of every one of us when our journey on earth is done. You know, you see these obituaries in the newspapers. These are uh, the, these things are the funeral services. You know, these days they they are, as, I think as part of their package they even put something in the newspaper about the person. So I think these guys in the funeral services they know some verses which work for certain occasions. So you will find anybody, whether it was a thief or what, you know, then they put at the end, I have fought the good fight. Sometimes you ask yourself, which fight did this man fight? But for us who are born again, for us who are children of God, for us who are pursuing holiness, who want to go to heaven, I pray that when they finally say that on the funeral, everybody will say, yeah, sure, sure, he has fought a good fight. I pray that when they are giving that speech and, you know, even in heaven they are in agreement that, yes, she has fought a good fight, he has fought a good fight, she has finished the race, she has kept the faith. Keep the faith, child of God. And then he says in verse 8, he says, as to what remains henceforth. You see motivation? As to what remains henceforth, there is laid up for me the victor's crown of righteousness. Hallelujah. There is laid up for me the victor's crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me and recompense me on that great day, not to me only, but to all those who have loved and yearned for and welcomed his appearing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Fight. There is a motivation here from Jesus himself. Revelations. Him who overcomes. Him who is victorious. Hallelujah. Are we, are we together? Are we together? Now, we go to the next church. To the angel of the church in Simana. <laughs> The whole morning I was practicing how to pronounce this name. Smyrna. Smyrna. <laughs> I was trying to practice so that by the time of the lunch hour, I would know how to, uh, you know, pronounce it very well. But anyway, you see it, you see it in the verse, that, that one. Eh? To the angel of that church, these are the words of the first and the last, who died and came to life again. Now listen to the message to this church. I know your affliction and distress and pressing trouble and your oh God, Gloria, and your poverty but you are rich. Eh, what a church. What a church. <laughs> what a church. I know your affliction and distress and pressing trouble and your poverty, but you are rich. You know, when the evangelists I'm among them. 
<laughs> when the evangelists are preaching to us, this kind of message cannot come out of an evangelist. Like on a crusade or in a, you know, this kind of, they, will tell, they, they cannot tell you, get saved. Uh, when you give your life to Christ, as part of your journey, there might be affliction. There might be distress. Give your life to Jesus. But I want to assure you that as part of the package, there might be seasons of poverty. <laughs> the evangelist will never tell you that. The evangelist will tell you, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anybody hears my voice and opens, I will enter and I will dine with him and he with me. Come to the table and dine with Jesus. <laughs> Evangelist Sacred will tell you, the thief comes to steal, to kill and destroy. But Jesus came that we might have life and life in its fullness. Come to Jesus and he will give you life and life in its fullness, abundant life. In Jesus, there is no failure. In Jesus, there is rest. In Jesus, all your prayers are answered. In Jesus, <laughs> now after you come to Jesus, then the apostle will come and tell you, I'm also, now in that side so on the crusade i am in the evangelistic and then after they come to jesus now i am in the grace of the apostle i say thank you for coming to jesus but when you are in jesus sometimes certain things happen when he says we are more than a conqueror through christ jesus it means there will be some moments where there will be battles. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, there will be some moments where there will be fights. Uh, and then the pastor will say, in fact, in some of those fights, you will be beaten and you will fall. But the righteous, when he says you will fall, the evangelist will pass around to preach in an overnight. And the evangelist will say, ah, a righteous man falls seven times, but he rises again. <laughs> Do you see the beauty in the church? Yeah. The evangelist will come around when you are about to go back. When you're saying, is this what I signed for? The evangelist will come around in a never in a novel and say, Aha, there is hope for a tree when it is cut down. <laughs> the teacher, the teacher will be telling you how to handle disheartenedness. <laughs> the teacher will be telling you how do you go about moments when you've lost your joy seven ways. To recover, to recover your joy. Hallelujah. I love church. I just love this salvation. Me, I, I don't know about you, but me, I am determined to enjoy the trip. I, I am go we are all going to heaven, but for me, I'm determined that while I am going to heaven, I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to enjoy the trip. Hallelujah. We must enjoy the trip. Is somebody getting this? So, now, this church at this place, they receive a, a, a sermon, a message. I know your affliction. I think it was a word of encouragement. Maybe they could have said, but does God really know? 
That, does, God really, does, God, does God really see what we are going through? After all, after, after the way we have served him, <laughs> after, after the way I have sowed the seed, you know, the other day, <laughs> you know, my wife sat for an interview, I even sowed the seed, and then she didn't get the job. I was like, does God see the, <laughs> the seed that I have sown? You know. <laughs> does God really see it? You know, and God comes and says, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. Remember when Paul was, when Paul came to Jesus three times, he says, take away this thorn, take away this thorn. Lord, I know in the name of Jesus, I declare this thorn goes in the name of Jesus. I declare I don't have a thorn in the, <laughs> do you know what he said? He said, my grace. My grace is all that you need. For my power, can you imagine God tells you that my power is made perfect in your weakness. <laughs> when you reach this place, you know that God is now maturing you, that, that you are entering the, the what they call bonds, that you, you have graduated from milk, you're no longer breastfeeding, you have been weaned, you have now entered the meat phase. Oh yes, the meat phase. The meat phase. Yeah. You know when you've just got saved, every prayer you pray is answered. Everything. Lord, do that. Lord, it's like there are angels who are just with your answers dangling over you. Yeah, I want this room. I want this room. I want this room. I want this. Then you reach a point and then this, the teacher will tell you, ah, ah, the scripture says, ask and you will receive. Then it says, ah, knock <laughs> and you will find. So certain things are for knocking. Then uh, seek, you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. And then you'll be reading your Bible and then you'll find verses like, Though it lingers. <laughs> Is somebody getting this message today? Though it lingers, wait for it. And you're like, why didn't the evangelist tell me that certain things linger? The evangelist said, when you get saved, I tell you, in the kingdom of God, you'll get married. You'll get your marriage breakthrough. And you have been saved and it is five years. And the sister hasn't come and the brother hasn't come and the pastor all the pastor is saying though it lingers wait for it the revelation awaits an appointed time and the the the, the <laughs> ah, when you are about to give up the evangelist pass you know for them they usually pass around they pass around and stir you up and continue to the next destination so the evangelist passes around when you're about to give up. And the evangelist will tell you, in his time, God makes all things beautiful. I see your time is coming. Though it lingers, wait for it. In his time, God makes all things beautiful. Somebody said beautiful. In the name of Jesus, weeping may have endured for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I see your morning has come. Then he disappears. <laughs> Leaves you with the pastor to encourage you while you wait for the morning. Hallelujah. So the church at Simarna... <laughs> And the pronunciation of this thing also gave me a problem. So the church at that place was undergoing affliction, was undergoing distress, was undergoing trouble. They even were in a season of poverty. This one, I believe the reason this verse is there is to tell us that these moments will come. These moments might come. You may have already experienced them. If you haven't experienced them yet, it is wisdom to live your life knowing it could come. There could be a season in your life when you don't have a job and you are serving God and you are believing God 
and you have sold all seeds and there is no sin in your life and there is no generation curse there is no all those things they talk about they are not there and it is just that season yeah today i'm giving you meat just receive it in the name of jesus just, just yeah the verse is there i wish it wasn't there but it is there and this one is also one of them which says he who has an ear <laughs> Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. This, 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 the time will come, affliction will come. Like, <clears throat> some of these things, you need to be in the healing ministry and then you see. The healing ministry, in healing school, one of the things they teach us, there is a topic called uh, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. The thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. If you're in the healing ministry, you have to be ready for the thrills of victory. There are those moments when, you know, you pray and healings and miracles and what have happened, and then there are moments you pray for somebody and they die. Agony of defeat. Ask yourself, why did I not do right? It is bones, I tell you the truth. These times come. They come. But you cannot, you cannot afford to, to give up. Because the, 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 the mystery of this thing is that this week you can pray for someone and they die. Next week you pray for someone and they get a miracle. You ask yourself, was I anointed last week and I'm not anointed this week? Was, you know, some of those things we don't know. We don't know. The Bible says we know in part. When he comes, we shall know in full. For the meantime, we just go with what we know. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. We keep running. You pray. You know, when the hour was starting, I preached a sermon in the upper room church in Barara. I told them, the Bible says, I think I preached it on 31st. I told them the Bible says, uh, all things have passed away. <laughs> Behold, all things have become new. I told them, that scripture says, forget the former things. So I told them, the things which didn't work in 2023, just forget those things and we have an opportunity with a new year. We have an opportunity to believe again. We have an opportunity to serve again. We have an opportunity if you applied and they didn't take you, you applied and you sat the interview, they didn't take you. This is a new opportunity. Forget the former things. You know, don't have your pity party. Don't carry your pity party into 2024. Wipe your tears. Start over. Apply again, send your CVs again, start over. The world is not going to stop. Hallelujah. <laughs> ah, I still love you. And uh, I'm sharing with you these things because I love you. And I need to tell you the truth. I need to speak to you the truth, the depth of God's word. Jeremiah talked about prophets who are prophesying lightly. I don't want to be among those people who prophesy lightly. Like, I spare you certain things. I, I, I spare you certain things like, ah, this is too much for them. No, I have to give it to you so that you know. God told them, I know your affliction and distress, your poverty, but you are rich. You are rich. He, he told them that they were rich. In spite of what they were going through, in spite of their afflictions, in spite of these guys were abused, these guys were uh, reviled, they were slandered. These days, these things will come. You know, somebody can say a thing about you, and you're also amazed by their creativity. <laughs> they, they tell you the story which somebody has made about you and you're amazed at how creative people can be 
<laughs> oh yes. You know, these things, you just have to have a different perspective. Instead of having a pity party, just say, this person is really creative. How, how could he even think about it? How could he even come up with such a story? He's really creative. You know, those are survival stunts for pastors, survival tricks for dealing with slander, dealing with discouragement. Hallelujah. Hmm. He says how you are abused, how you are reviled, slandered by those who say, by those who say are Jews. Now verse 10, <coughs> excuse me, verse 10, fear nothing, you would think, Munang, verse 9 is too much, let him stop there. He continues, fear nothing that you are about to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> fear nothing that you are about to suffer. Dismiss your dread and your fears. Behold, the devil, can you imagine? This is Jesus speaking. You're like, can't he deal with the devil? Can't he deal with the devil? You remember when he told Peter that Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you, Peter. You, you, you'd be like, can't he just deal with Satan? So that Satan doesn't sift them. But he says, Peter, I, I have prayed for you. I, Satan is going to sift you. And God, he really sifted the guy. <laughs> he sifted the guy. Until the man even called curses on him. So he says, I don't know him. I don't know that guy you're talking about. That was real sifting. But Jesus said, I have prayed for you. That when you come back. You, you strengthen the brethren. Let me tell you, there is always a comeback. You, ca you can bounce back from these kind of situations. You can bounce back. Uh, you can bounce back. Hallelujah. Behold, the devil is indeed about to throw some of you into prison. I'm not prophesying, but I'm, I'm just saying, if such a situation happens, remember that even that kind of situation, the Bible talks about it. <laughs> uh, the, the devil is indeed about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and proved and critically appraised. So it might not be prison for you, but you can be sure that in the 366 days that we have in this year, there will be some of the days where they will be dedicated to the testing of your faith. Some of those days are dedicated to the testing of your faith because it has to be proved to be genuine. Yeah. The testing of your it is what James wrote has said, rejoice when you go into all kinds of trials, because the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Some of the days are dedicated to the testing of your faith, to the testing of your staying power. How long can you stay? How long can you wait? How long can you believe God? How long can you hold on? How long can you keep your virginity? How long? How long? Oh, yes. Somebody getting this? This is such a good message. What a message. Hallelujah. That you may be tested and proved and critically appraised. For these guys, it was 10 days. For 10 days, <laughs> you will have affliction. Now, I don't want the teacher now to tell me that you know, according to the scriptures, to God, a thousand years are like one day. The teacher might come and start telling us that a, a thousand years are like one day. Teacher, please spare us. This is for 10 days. <laughs> Beck is spare us. Don't start telling us a thousand, uh, a thousand years are like one day. So ten days could be ten thousand. <laughs> blah blah blah. Spare us. Spare us. Eh? For ten days you will have affliction. <laughs> the message is for the moments when the affliction comes, for the moments when the trials come, be loyally faithful. Stay loyal to the calling. Stay loyal to the truth. 
Stay loyal. Be like Paul and say, I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded. Stay loyal to the calling. Stay loyal to your faith. Child of God. When those moments come. When those challenging times come. When you know you believe. You pray for this job. You do everything. You, you even get dreams while seated in the office. <laughs> and then you don't get the job. You know has it ever happened to you? You pray, you believe, you fast, then you even get a word. The pastor tells you, I think this is your season. And then another visiting preacher says, I see the Lord opening a great door. You're like, this must be it. <laughs> and then you go for the interview. They tell you, you, you did well. You really did well. You impressed everybody. But for some reason, they gave the job to another person. <laughs> ah. When that happens, stay faithful. <laughs> stay what? Stay faithful. Even if you must die. You know, dying may not be like physical death, but dying is... Do you know the death that you die when you have told everybody that, you know, I... This, it's just a matter of time. They, they, they are just, it's like just dealing with the paperwork. I've just, I, I was told by somebody inside. I was told by somebody inside that I've just got the job. And, and do you know the day that you die? To tell people that, by the way, I actually didn't get it. <laughs> do you know the death? Ah. Keep faithful. Even when you have to come to announce and say, ah, oh, I didn't. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. The relationship didn't. When everybody in the church has been saying, we have already bought the clothes, we have already done what, well. we have already, you have set dates. Do you know the death? That it, when you come to say that, yeah, it, it didn't work out. Uh, it didn't work out. Uh, but, uh, we are continuing to trust God. <laughs> we are continuing to, even, even as you say it, you're not sure you believe what you're saying. Do you know that death? <laughs> Charlotte is saying it is death by lethal injection. When that death happens, am I talking to somebody this afternoon who has experienced some deaths? Some deaths? Ah. Pastors die so many deaths. You pray Sunday morning, you get a vision of a full church in your prayers. <laughs> in your prayers, the church is full, the parking is full. And then you enter the church. <laughs> the service starts, and you're like, oh God, where are they? Where are the people you are showing me, dear Jesus? Where are they, Lord? Even, even your, the ones you rely on, they, they don't show up. They send you a message. We went to the village. We did what? Blah, blah, blah. We are doing something. We are unable to make it. You die so many deaths. Sometimes you die five times within the same service. The session leader doesn't show up. Then the choir sings over how. Then you die again. Then... <laughs> Hallelujah, pastors. Glory to God. Now, even if you have to die like that, stay faithful. Stay what? Stay faithful. Stay faithful. If you find yourself at the location of that church, this church we've read about in Revelation chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, stay faithful. Keep the faith. Hold on. Hold on. Even if they say, we are sorry, we are sorry, you're such a great guy, but you're great for another sister. Hold on. <laughs> ah, I remember somebody who told me that I was a great guy, but not for them. You know, hold on. <laughs> I didn't see you in that way. The things we have been told. Oh God, I didn't see you in that way. Hold on. Hold on. Keep the faith. Hallelujah. 